KCET. Rethink TV. Well, here it is, Halloween. The California bear is wearing a witch's hat. And to help get in the Halloween spirit, we're taking a look at one of the oldies but goodies, one of the real classics. The day in 2000, the year 2000, we visited Forrest Ackerman in his home, the Acker Mansion. Now, the Acker Mansion, you have to see to believe, and Forrest Ackerman was a character. Well, since we did that interview in 2000, Forrest Ackerman has passed away. He died in 2004. The Acker Mansion was sold, and his wonderful collection was also sold and scattered to the wind. But isn't it wonderful that we have this program, this adventure, to look at? And remember, Forrest Ackerman and the day we visited with him in the Acker Mansion in the year 2000. Enjoy. And happy Halloween, everybody. Trick or treat. Visiting with Huell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser, and here we are in Los Feliz, up in the hills. We're standing in front of this amazing old historic house, which was built back in 1923. Now the architecture alone tells you that this is a special place, but we're going to spend the whole afternoon inside this house, because inside this house is something that you have to see to believe. And even when you see it, you might not believe it. Let's go inside. Who dares disturb the sleep of the Acker Monster? Mr. Ackerman, it's Huell Hauser. Can I come in? I bid you welcome. Enter at your own risk. Oh boy. Come on in, Louie. Okay, we are inside, and let me formally introduce everyone. Come on over here, Mr. Ackerman. This is Mr. Forrest Ackerman, who is, well, there's no rival to you anywhere in the world. You are acknowledged to be Mr. Science Fiction. In well, fact, not, not, uh, not only this world, but several others that I have visited. <laughs> and you coined the expression sci-fi. Yes, That's your work. Yeah, you're looking vain for it before 1954, but I was riding around the automobile, had the radio on, heard some reference to hi-fi, and since science fiction had been on the tip of my tongue ever since 1929, I looked in the rear view mirror, stuck out my tongue, and there tattooed on the end of my tongue was sci-fi. Sci-fi. You invented it. Yes, I did. Oh, by the way, you might like to take a look at Bela Lugosi's Dracula ring. Now, is that really the actual that is ring really that Bela Lugosi wore in the Dracula ring? Absolutely. They're a carnelian with a silver overlay. Now, how did you get this ring? Oh, don't be afraid. <laughs> I never drink at Hollywood and wine. Oh, boy. We're in for a lot of this this afternoon, aren't we? <laughs> I'm afraid so. <laughs> All right, your home, in case you haven't caught on yet, your home from ceiling to floor is sci-fi. That's correct. Including right over here in the corner. Now, what's this? Uh, that's from the uh, TV series, uh, Battlestar Galactica. And it turned up in uh, another film, which I had uh, one of my many cameos. I've done... Uh, 94 cameos today. Really? So yes. you've been in sci-fi movies as well. Well, I was the future president of the United States and Amazon Women on the Moon. <laughs> Next film, I graduated, became president of the world. Uh huh. Then after two terms, I was out of a job, and all I could get was to be a judge in Nudist Colony of the Dead. It was, uh, now I missed that one. Nudist Colony of the Dead. Oh, you lucky devil! You lucky devil! <laughs> Let's walk in here. Yes, Louis. We are in for a treat, and we're going to keep Louis busy today because there is so much to see, including in this case. Yes. I've already been in and scoped some of this out. <laughs> this is 
Uh, that's the uh, artificial blood that they use in the Dracula films. Oh boy, and here is Dracula right here. Bill to go see himself. Yes, I befriended him the last three years of his life. Was with him just uh, two weeks before he was lying on his deathbed and was the 101st person to pass by his casket in the funeral. Oh boy, now what are these? Oh, those are quarries, ghoulish teeth from uh, one of his Dracula films. And, uh, I'm not familiar. Robert Quarry. He yeah. played Dracula in some of Well, he, uh, uh, he played a, a vampire, yes. And, and uh, here a, I have uh, 255 different editions of Frankenstein, but in this one I have the signature of the teenager Mary Shelley who wrote it. And uh, this leaf I brought back from Switzerland from her garden where she dreamed up Frankenstein. and. Finally, that is a leaf from atop her tomb in England. And we have a picture of you visiting yes. her tomb. Now, her name again is... Mary Shelley. And she wrote she Frankenstein. Wrote, I don't know whether Frankenstein ever wrote back. That hasn't been determined. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she wrote Frankenstein. Now, these are amazing pieces of memorabilia you have collected. Um, Bill Lugosi, when I met him, he had uh, 25 statuettes of himself as Dracula made in Hungary. Right he, here. Right there. And he gave me one, and an earthquake okay. promptly destroyed it. So he gave me another, and at that point he was down to uh, just one left. And finally, uh, his widow over in uh, uh, the Hawaiian Islands, so she had the last one. What is well, that? that is from Czechoslovakia. There's a uh, creature uh, called the Man of Clay. This is called a golem, and that's been made as a film three or four times. So you really are, I mean, you know, oh my gosh, look over here. Oh. <laughs> this is, you, you've got it all here. Um, all the films here, all the Boris Karloff films, made for TV movies, correspondence, you've got it all cataloged here. Yes. Well, I was very fortunate. I picked the right pair of maternal grandparents. Wasted the first five and a half years of my life, but uh, in 1922 they took me to a film that had a little spook in it, and uh, they realized that that was the kind of movie I wanted to see. So um, a man named Lon Chaney came along and began making movies for me, like The Phantom of the Opera and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and the, you got hooked yeah, as a kid. I got hooked. I, and evidently, you've been hooked ever since. I'm wondering about this over here. I was just looking over your shoulder. Now, this doesn't necessarily look like it was from a horror film. Well, it was. Uh, they uh, made a movie out of my uh, character, Vampirella, and Talisa Soto wore that as the uh, oh, as the woman from another world. Uh, now, this looks like a. This is a comic book. Yeah, that's right. Still, Vampirella, still being published today. Did you? Come up with this? Yes, I. This is your character. It's my character, yes. Wow. <laughs> so you write, you collect, you act. I, uh, obviously, I you live it. here in this house because <laughs> here's your ironing board out here in the middle. Yes. <laughs> we, we forget this is actually your house as well as a museum. Well, Those 18 rooms with 300,000 things in it. Of, the nature that you're looking at, every room. Oh, now wait a minute, what is this? This looks well, important. There, there's uh, the Lon Chaney Lost Film, London After Midnight, which I saw in 1929 and hasn't been seen since. But that is the beaver hat that he wore and the ghoulish teeth. Look at those teeth. Now how did you get, oh wait a minute, here is the, here is the movie poster yeah. from that. Uh huh. London After Midnight, back in 1929. Wow. How many of these pieces of memorabilia do you have in here? Well, 300,000 things all together. There are 50,000 books. That, oh, I can read your mind. You're about to say Shirley. But don't call me Shirley. <laughs> you haven't read all those books. I've read every last word in my collection. Really? When I get a new book, I... Uh, Turn to the last page and read the last word. Now, where do you keep these books? I haven't oh, seen any books. Oh, well, down below you'll see 50,000 of them. Yeah, that was my lead-in. That was a little acting on my part because 
You do have, I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg That's here. That's right. We are actually going to head downstairs to see well, the real you, collection. First, you may want to see the kitchen in desperation. I'm turning it into an art gallery. <laughs> this is, we're going into the kitchen. Oh, my gosh. There I was with my first abominable snowman. <laughs> Look at this, Louie. That's, that's, now that's what you started with, the abominable snowman. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and you've got every wall in the kitchen covered. Yeah, well, my wife came home and she opened the refrigerator and she found reels of film instead of food. And she realized that the end had come. I had this wonderful wife for 41 years, but we got mugged in Italy, and uh, 11 years ago she lost her life as an aftermath of that. She was a Polish girl, and she translated 150 science fiction books uh, from French and German into English. So her love was science fiction as well. Yeah, let, let me tell you, using a little story, when I met her, her accent was a combination of German, French, and British. And I'd never heard anything quite like it. I said, oh, where'd that interesting accent come from? Well, she was very proud of her uh, origin, and she haughtily replied, oh, my ancestors were highly civilized, while yours were hanging by their tails from trees. <laughs> Naturally, I never spoke to her again. Oh, no, you just married her. <laughs> All right, we're, we're, we're taking the house tour upstairs. Okay. But we've got to now... Descend. Move quickly and descend. Oh my gosh, look at this, this whole little collection right here. Yeah, all Frankensteins and Draculas. Now, do you have a favorite, Frankenstein or Dracula, or do the two kind of... Uh, uh, well, I, uh, on uh, Christmas Day, 1931, I hadn't read the book Frankenstein, and uh, I went down to a theater to see the premiere of it. It might just as well have been called McDonald's or uh, any kind of a name because it was meaningless at the time. Of course, today it conjures up the, the vision of the, of the uh, Boris Karloff Frankenstein with a wonderful makeup by Jack Pierce. But in front of the theater, there was an ambulance, and I thought, uh oh, what kind of a movie am I getting into? Inside, there were uh, uh, nurses standing.